How's it going everybody? This is Than from Tidal Gardens, and today let's talk about some Acropora. Acropora tend to be very, very challenging. They need extremely strong flow, strong lighting, and your chemical parameters have to be spot on and very, very, very consistent. If you're new to SPS and especially Acropora, you're probably going to notice one thing right away, and that is how easily they change color. Here, you can see a before and after picture of an acro colony that we got. Initially it came in kind of pastel blue, fairly light, and you can see now it's a very lush purple color. It's pretty easy to see why Acropora is such a popular coral. They come in possibly the most diverse array of colors out there, and there is something that's attractive about a coral that other people find challenging. For the longest time, a lot of folks had a great deal of difficulty keeping them. Even to this day, I would say that most hobbyists would consider Acropora one of the more difficult corals to keep. And the challenge is in itself what makes this coral fascinating and interesting. If you're familiar at all with zoanthids, Acropora are similar in one way that you may or may not like and that is they share some colorful trade names such as Ice Fire Echinatas or Hawkins Echinata or like the Red Dragon, what else is there, Oregon Tort. If you peruse the forums at all, you'll come across um, a very, very, very long list of interesting names, let's just call it, uh, that you'll need to catch up on just to, to make your way to, towards identifying some of the more popular morphs out there. Another interesting aspect of Acropora, especially wild-caught acros, is that they tend to uh, harbor some symbiotic crabs. And here you can see uh, a couple of these guys at work. I don't think it's very well understood the relationship between the crab and the coral, but it's generally thought that these crabs tend to have a beneficial effect on the corals in that they clean off the detritus, um, any kind of uh, films and algaes, and they also fend off pests and predators. Okay, I'll end this video with a new acquisition that we picked up here. One of the local aquarists, his name's Matt, he was getting rid of this massive, and I mean absolutely massive colony of Red Planet, and this thing is probably a good foot across. Even though that this colony is called a Red Planet, some of the pictures that you might see online show an entirely green colony. And yes, that green colony is a red planet. It's just that they're able to change that dramatically. All right guys, thanks so much for watching. And if you like this channel, please, please, please subscribe. Um, no lurkers out there, no more lurkers. Just hit the button, subscribe. See you guys.